I'm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. Most teachers take a pretty active interest in their school's various athletic teams. But our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, could never get too enthusiastic about the baseball team. That is, until Mr. Boynton, Madison's bashful biologist, took over the coaching job. Then I watched every game with avid interest. I even studied up on baseball terms. Until by the third game on Madison's schedule, I could accurately describe every play in every chucker. <laughs> And I even knew the names of the pitchers warming up in the pig pen, a bull pen. <laughs> Last Thursday morning, I really looked forward to picking up some first-hand knowledge of the game. Walter Denton, the manager of the team, and Stretch Snodgrass, its star player, were to pick me up and drive me to school. I had asked my landlady, Mrs. Davis, to wake me promptly at 7.30. Oh, Connie. Get up, Connie. Hmm? You want me to pinch hit? What's the matter? <laughs> Oh, it's you, Mrs. Davis. I do hope you're safe, Connie. Oh, safe? Safe where? From the looks of your bed sheets, you just slid into home plate. <laughs> now get up here. Walter and Stretch should be here soon. Oh, that's right. The Rover boys are picking me up today, aren't they? They're a grand couple of kids, Connie. And they're always together. I've never seen two people so inseparable. Just like Mr. Boynton and myself. Except that we're separable. <laughs> I'd like to wear something sporty today. Let's see now, what do I have that looks real baseballish? How about your gray dress with the wide spreading sleeves? No, not today. Although it does make me look a little like a bat. <laughs> <laughs> How about your seersucker house dress? No, too formal. <laughs> oh, I know. A light green gabardine suit with a smart cardigan jacket. Perfect. I'll get it for you right away, Connie. Well, thanks a lot, Mrs. Davis. Where is it? In Sherry's department store. <laughs> <laughs> It'll cost you $110. <laughs> there you go, teasing me again. Oh, uh, by the way, the boys weren't together last night. I wonder why. I ran into Stretch at the movies. He was sitting with a girl. That's why. <laughs> Who was the girl? Harriet Conklin. Harriet Conklin, but she's Walter's girl. Oh, then maybe that's why Stretch cornered me in the lobby and asked me not to breathe a word of it to a living soul. What does that make me? <laughs> oh, I know. It just slipped out. But whatever you do, Mrs. Davis, don't let it slip out in front of Walter. Don't even bring up the subject of movies. Oh, I won't, Connie. I know how awful it is when somebody comes between two people who belong together. Me too, Mrs. Davis. I've learned that little lesson the hard way through my association with Mr. Boynton. But who comes between you and Mr. Boynton? Mr. Boynton. <laughs> I'll get it. Hello, boys. Come in. Hello, Hello Miss Brooks. Brooks. Well, how are Damon and Pythias today? Damon who? <laughs> Damon and Pythias. They were good friends, Stretch, like you and Walter. Oh, did they go to Madison? Well, if they did, it was before my time. <laughs> now, Miss Brooks was just acknowledging the fact that we're pals, Stretch. You know, like Lenny and George in Of Mice and Men. Oh, I like that. Stretch, don't tell me you read Of Mice and Men. No, Walter read it to me. I like the part where George tells Lenny about the rabbits. You gotta read that to me again sometime, Walter. I will, Stretch. You know, in a lot of ways, you two are just like Lenny and George. Especially Lenny. <laughs> you think so, Miss Brooks? Gee, I don't. How could Walter get to be manager of the baseball team if that's all the smart he was? Walter wasn't my candidate for Lenny. Oh, hello, boys. Hello, hello Mrs. Davis. Davis. How are you this morning? Oh, we're, we're fine, fine Mrs. Mrs. Davis. Davis. Sounds like the world's smallest choir. <laughs> I think it's wonderful the way you two boys stick together, sharing all your experiences. Why, you even share... Uh, it's getting late, Mrs. Davis. We've got to run along now. Yeah, run along now. I almost let the cat out, didn't I? <laughs> uh, what cat? Our cat, Minerva. She almost slipped out between Mrs. Davis and the kitchen door. <laughs> yeah, the kitchen door. <laughs> That's right, Walter. <laughs> 
I'm getting so absent-minded lately. Can't even remember what I did one day ago. Of course, I remember going to the movies last night. That's where I saw... Oops! You saw what? Oops, it's an Eskimo movie. (laughs) Starring Ingrid Eek. (laughs) Come on, boys, we'll be late for school. Stretch, you just missed that other car by inches. What other car? Oh, <laughs> Walter, maybe you ought to drive. Oh, don't be nervous, Miss Brooks. Stretch is a natural born athlete. He's going to make a swell driver. He's going to make a swell driver. Stretch, how long have you been driving an automobile? There's absolutely nothing to worry about, Miss Brooks. I've been driving for days. For days? How many days? Eight. Well, nine if you want to count the day I learned how. <laughs> Get it down pat, Miss Brooks. He remembers everything I taught him. Don't you stretch? I sure do, Walter. First, I gently depress the clutch pedal. Then I gently shift into first. Then I gently let the clutch up. And then you gently pluck the pedestrians off the bumper. <laughs> and stretch. If you're going to pass another vehicle, please pass him on the. Oh! Oh, you're just teasing me, Miss Brooks. We were miles away from that Phantom Roadster. Phantom Roadster? That was a moving van. <laughs> in the rearview mirror, you'll see the driver kneeling on the floor of the cab with his hands clasped. <laughs> you better cut down your speed a little, Stretch. Sure, pal. Atta boy. You know, Miss Brooks, Stretch and I have been pals ever since the day we met in your third term English class. I remember. That was two years ago, and we've all been together ever since. <laughs> but it's nice that you're such good pals. We sure are, Miss Brooks. There isn't anything that could make me feel any differently toward old Stretch here. I hope not, Walter. Uh, There's just one thing I gotta straighten him out about, Miss Brooks. That's girls. I gotta take old Stretch in hand. You better use two hands. (laughs) Yeah, he's altogether too shy and retiring when it comes to the fair sex. Oh, I am not. You are too. Oh, I am not. You are too. I'm laying eight to five myself. Uh, not to change the subject, too obviously, but what are we doing on this street? Is this a shortcut to school? Oh, no, Miss Brooks. I told him to go this way. We're going to pick up my girl, you know, Harriet Conklin. Uh, Take it easy now, Stretch. Harriet lives right down this block here. Yeah, I know. What's that? Uh, He said, whoa, to that horse. (laughs) He almost ran away. What horse? Yeah, what horse? How do you like that? He did run away. (laughs) Well, here's the Conklin homestead, and there's Harriet right at the curb. We can pick her up and keep right on going to school. Please, Stretch, I didn't mean for you to pick her up on the fender. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hi, Walter. Good morning, Harriet. Welcome aboard. I'll hold the door for you, Harriet. Get in back with me. Thanks, Walter. Hello, Stretch. Hi. Well, let's go. Notice how much wider the back seat is, Harriet? Why, yes, it does seem roomy for a convertible. How did you get that effect? The right side fell off yesterday. (laughs) I got it in my garage, though. (laughs) That's what I like about a convertible. In wet weather, you can always put the sides on. (laughs) How's the driving coming along, Stretch? Fine. You're not very talkative today, are you? He's concentrating, Harriet. Uh, Keep it up, Stretch, old boy, old boy. Oh, say, Harriet, about last night. I'm sorry I couldn't take you to the movies, but I had to work on the baseball schedule. Oh, I wouldn't want you to overlook the schedule, Walter. Don't worry about me. I had a thoroughly wonderful evening. Oh, did you go to the movies anyway? Of course. With who? Uh, with whom, Walter? You see, after the word with, which is the okay, preposition... Brooks. With whom did you go with, Harriet? Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Boy, I'm sure glad baseball season is here. Boy, I sure like baseball, boy. Don't you, Miss Brooks? And how, boy. (laughs) (laughs) I sure like baseball, boy. Don't you, Harriet, old boy? (laughs) Personally, I think there's nothing like a real romantic movie. Provided, of course, you're seeing it with the right party. Me too. But like I just asked you, who are you with? A whom? And I think I can answer that question, Walter. Mr. Boynton and I saw the same movie that Harriet saw. Oh, what did you all see? Oh, it was the ideal picture for Mr. Boynton and myself. John Garfield and Jennifer Jones in We Were Strangers. (laughs) But Miss Brooks, I didn't 
see you there. Did you, Stretch? Stretch? Well, how could he have seen anybody at the movies? He had to help his dad at the pet shop. At least, that's what he told me he had to do last night. Sure, Walter. That's what I did have to do at the time when you asked me. Well, here's the school. Good old Madison. Put the brake on, Stretch. Where's the school, Miss Brooks? Just one block back, Stretch. <laughs> You'll have to sharpen your reflexes a little. Don't bother backing up. The walk will do us good. Okay. If you'll all get out here, I'll find a place to park. Will you wait a minute? I want to get something settled. Did you go to the movies last night, Stretch? Sure, pal. My dad decided to close early, and I got 50 cents for helping out. So I just up and went. And I guess you just up and ran into Harriet, huh? Well, we did sit together, Walter. Huh? My girl. My best girl and my best pal. Seeing movies behind my back. How long have you been showing movies on your back? <laughs> Taking this much too seriously. Please, Miss Brooks. I'll handle this in my own way. Stretch, you've made a fool out of me. How could I, Walter? Good question. <laughs> There's only one way to settle this thing. Meet me behind the handball court after school. But, Walter, you can't mean you want to fight. I must. I must get satisfaction. Satisfaction? You'll get fractured. <laughs> now, let's discuss this thing calmly. There's nothing more to discuss. I'll see you after school, you... you false friend. <laughs> Walter, wait! I'm going with you! I want to talk to you! Go ahead, Harriet. Tell them that we just... See you ha later, Stretch. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Harriet. Oh, this is awful. What'll I do, Miss Brooks? I just bumped into Harriet accidentally, and she insisted that we sit together. I can't fight Walter. I'm almost a foot taller than him. And besides, I ain't mad. Well, just relax, Stretch. I think there's a way out of this impending duel... You see, inasmuch as he challenged you, you've got the choice of weapons. I have? Certainly. And I think I know a way you two can battle without anyone getting hurt a bit. How's that, Miss Brooks? You'll fight a battle of wits. <laughs> All of Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palmolive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather Palmolive over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. For Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure. New charm. So ladies, forget all other beauty care and use palm olive soap the way doctors advised for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. And then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palmolive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big, bath-sized Palmolive in tub or shower. Well, by lunchtime, the news of the impending grudge match between Walter and Stretch had spread throughout the school. Interest was at fever pitch. In fact, you'd think that Joe Lewis had just announced that he was going to fight again, again. <laughs> Still determined to stop this one-sided brawl between six-foot-five Stretch and five-foot-six Walter, I went right to the source of the trouble and had a heart-to-heart -heart with Harriet Conklin. It's up to you to prevent this fight, Harriet. You've got to tell Walter that your meeting with Stretch was accidental. But it isn't just last night, Miss Brooks. Walter knows that for weeks now, Stretch hasn't been able to keep his eyes off me. How does Walter know that? I reminded him. <laughs> Besides, they won't really hurt each other, Miss Brooks. And it'll do Walter a lot of good to fight. Win or lose, it'll make a bigger man out of him. I agree, Harriet, but only until the swelling goes down. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Brooks. Think of the romance of it. Two knights of old jousting for their lady fair. I'll bet you'd like it if Mr. Boynton was fighting for your favor. Mr. Boynton? Well, yes. Can't you just picture Mr. Boynton in a suit of armor, 
Can't you just see him riding forth to do battle? Yes, I can, Harriet. Mounted on a big, fiery frog. <laughs> no, I don't think Mr. Boynton would. Or would he? But don't you see, Miss Brooks? I've got to make myself more desirable to Walter because of Daddy's feelings toward him. What are Daddy's feelings toward him? Loathing, mostly. You should have heard how Daddy described Walter the other day when he drove me home from school. Right to his face, he called him a, a teenage waste of time on wheels. <laughs> well, I didn't know your father had it in him. But I've got to stop this fight whether you like it or not, Harriet. And your mentioning Mr. Boynton has given me a good idea. In fact, it's given me a couple of good ideas, but that one will have to wait. <laughs> Come in. Well, it's Miss Brooks. Hello, Mr. Boynton. I missed you in the cafeteria today. Oh, I didn't go to the cafeteria today, Miss Brooks. Oh, I guess that's why I missed you in the cafeteria today. <laughs> I brought some sandwiches with me from home so I could have lunch with McDougal here. You remember Mac, my pet frog? Of course. Hi, Mac. <laughs> Like he enjoyed his sandwich. <laughs> and Mr. Boynton, the reason I came into the laboratory was to. Say, what's that scent in here? Oh, that's a new deodorant, Miss Brooks. It's called Sweet Air. Pretty fancy, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Makes the white mice smell like mink. <laughs> but as I started to say, Mr. Boynton, I stopped in here to ask you to do something for me. Anything, Miss Brooks? Well, I. Did you say anything, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> yes, I did. Then, Mr. Boynton... Now, cut it out, Connie, one thing at a time. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, I came here to ask you to stop a fight. A fight? Oh, you mean between Stretch Snodgrass and Walter Denton? You know about it? Oh, the whole school knows about it. But I'm afraid it's too late to stop it, Miss Brooks. In fact, I've arranged to get the boxing gloves and have a temporary ring built in the gym during the next period. A ring? Why, then you're actually promoting this, this ridiculous... Well, now, take it easy, Miss Brooks. It, it's better than having them fight in the street with their fists. This way, they'll get it all out of their systems and be better friends afterwards. But they're the best of friends now, up to this morning, anyway. Why, Stretch worships Walter Denton. Well, a few rounds of boxing won't change that. In fact, after the fight, Stretch will be closer to Walter than ever before. Only if he acts as a pallbearer. <laughs> Stretch is almost a foot taller than Walter, Mr. Boynton. Oh, that's nothing. It just means that Walter will have to get in close under his opponent's guard. Well, I remember when I was in grade school, a great big fellow picked a fight with me. He must have been eight inches taller than I was. But I remembered what I'd learned in gym about the smaller fellow getting in close. Well, the fight didn't take very long. One punch and it was all over. Really, Mr. Boynton? Yes, I didn't get in close enough. <laughs> but I had lots of fights after that. You did? Tell me, Mr. Boynton, in these boyhood fights of yours, were there any girls involved? Gosh, no, Miss Brooks. I wouldn't hit a girl. <laughs> well, bravo for you. <laughs> well, what I mean is, take now, for instance. If you walked into a movie some night and saw me with another man, what would you say to him? Do I know the man? Certainly not. Well, then I wouldn't say anything to him. I don't believe in talking to strangers. <laughs> Of course, if you introduced me to him, It I... just happens that this man picked me up in front of the movies. Oh, that isn't very nice. The least he could have done was pick you up at home. <laughs> Let me paint another picture for you, Sir Galahad. <laughs> you and I have a dinner date. As we're going through the door of the restaurant, a tall, dark man with a big black mustache purposely jostles me. What do you do, Mr. Boynton? Are we going into the restaurant or coming out of the restaurant? <laughs> I've got one more picture to paint, and then I'm going to throw away my easel. <laughs> you and I are seated in a parked car on Lakeview Drive. All of a sudden, a man's face appears on your side of the car. Uh, I know. He's a cop. He's holding a flashlight on us, and he says, What are you two doing in there? And then I say, Nothing, officer. And he says, Then you get out and hold the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> that you've defended me with your last drop of blood, Ronald. <laughs> Let's leave this tropical paradise and return to Liverpool. I'm sure Papa will give you your old job back. My old job? Yes, measuring orange rind in his marmalade factory. <laughs> There's a hot one you can kick around for a while. 
Right now, I'm going down to Mr. Conklin's office. He'll put a stop to this fighting nonsense. Oh, but Miss Brooks... Goodbye, you... Mr. Boynton. Then you get out and hold the flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. He just got it. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, how do you feel about prize fighting? Well, I'm a little out of condition, but I... It, oh, oh, you mean in general. <laughs> I mean here at Madison. I think you should know that there's a so-called grudge match going to be fought this afternoon between two of our students. A grudge match? Where? In the gym. They even, they're even building a temporary ring for it. I forbid it. Personal combat is no longer the civilized way to settle personal differences. Oh, good for you, Mr. Conklin. I was hoping you'd react that way. Especially since the fight is over your own daughter, Harriet. Harriet? What has she got to do with this? Well, you see, Harriet was at a movie last night with Stretch Snodgrass. Stretch Snodgrass? Madison star athlete? Is he sweet on Harriet? Only from a distance, Mr. Conklin. But she's been going around with Walter Denton steadily. And when he found Walter out... Walter Denton? Why, he's nothing but a, a... A teenage waste of time on wheels. Brilliantly put, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Although a little reminiscent. Uh, seems... But about this fight, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Stretch is so much taller than Walter, he has every advantage. Yes, he has, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> what time is this fight going to be held, Miss Brooks? But, Mr. Conklin, aren't you going to stop it? Stop it? I'm going to referee it. <laughs> Attention, please. Uh, quiet, please. Quiet. Uh, Miss Brooks, if you'll just ring the bell for me, please. Yes, Mr. Conklin. Now, as you all know, this is a grudge fight between two members of our undergraduate body. On my left, wearing purple trunks and weighing 128, I give you Madison's outstanding athlete, a four-letter man of whom any school should justly be proud. Stretch Snodgrass. And on my right, wearing black trunks and a catcher's mask, I get... <laughs> Take that mask off, Denton. I give you Walter Denton. I will referee the bout while counting for the knockdowns. We will have our Miss Brooks. Now, inasmuch as many of you couldn't get close enough to this temporary ring to see the contest, Miss Brooks will also officiate at the PA system to bring you a blow-by-blow -blow account of the proceedings. Are you all ready, Miss Brooks? One, two, three. Woof, woof. Testing. Woof. <laughs> all right, Mr. Conklin. Then if you boys will join me in the center of the ring, I'll give you your final instructions. As the fighters go to the center of the ring, just a word of reminder. Boys, if, like Walter Denton, you're about to get your head knocked off, why not put an Adam's hat on it first? <laughs> and now let's listen to the referee's instructions. Marcus of Queensbury rules. I am here for one reason and one reason only, to see that fair play is strictly observed. You will at all times be honestly and impartially judged. Now then, Stretch. Yes, Mr. Conklin? I want you to be sure and go to a neutral corner every time Denton is on the floor. <laughs> and you, Denton? Yes, sir? Where do you want your bodies... Oh, well, I have <laughs> Now then, you two, I want a good, clean fight and may the better man win. And win quickly, Stretch. <laughs> go to your corners. Come out fighting. There goes the bell, folks. Oh, Walter's down. Fell over his shoelace. <laughs> now it's tied, and the two men meet in the center of the ring. They're cautious at first. Walter is dancing lightly around. Left arm extended. Stretch is dancing around. Now they're dancing around together. <laughs> Mr. Conklin breaks them, and once more they circle around carefully. Now, here it is, the first exchange. Well, come on, Stretch. Why don't you throw a punch? Oh, I don't want to hit you first, Walter. You hit me first. No, you hit me first. No, you hit me first. They're going at it hammer and tong. <laughs> Mostly tong. Stretch, come on, fight. I ain't mad at you, Walter. Come on, man, mix it up, mix it up. This crowd came here to see a fight. Oh, gosh, Miss Brooks. <laughs> it looks like they're really going to start hitting each other. Not while I'm at the bell. <laughs> and there's the end of round one. Walter Denton is in the corner right above us. Uh, how do you feel, Walter? He didn't lay a glove on me. I know. <laughs> Let's see how Stretch is doing over in his corner. His seconds are just giving him a good gargle. He can use it. He was pretty eloquent in that last round. Now he's on his feet, and Mr. Conklin is motioning for the second round to begin. 
There they go again, both men still pretty fresh and ready for each other's best dialogue. Now, <laughs> listen, you two. You've got to do some fighting this round. Yes, sir. Come on, Walter. Take a poke at me. No, Stretch. You take a poke at me. I can't. Not while I'm looking at you. Look at me. <laughs> well, we'll just close our eyes and swing, and then the crowd will think we're really fighting. Come on. <laughs> Gosh, Miss Brooks, I didn't mean to do it. He'll be all right in a minute, Walter. And you mustn't feel badly about it. This is the way the crowd wanted it to end. You heard them cheering, didn't you? But I don't care about the crowd, Miss Brooks. I just care about my pal, Stretch. He's perfectly all right. Stretch, come on, Stretch. Tell Walter you're all right. Yeah, sure. I'm okay, Walter. Let's shake hands. You bet, pal. And now that you and the students have had complete satisfaction, there's one thing I'd like you to do for me. Sure, Miss Brooks. What is it? Well, while he's still out, you two had better carry Mr. Conklin down to his office. <laughs> Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream, not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable, gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooke. Well, we took Mr. Conklin back to his office, and it didn't take long for him to come to. Oh, uh, where am I? What happened? It was an accident, Mr. Conklin. Denton, you... you struck me. But he, he didn't mean it, Mr. Conklin. Didn't mean it? I saw him winding up. <laughs> but it was an accident, Mr. Conklin. All Walter did was close his eyes like this, then pull his arm back like this, and then swing like this. Doing! <laughs> well, Madison isn't the only high school you boys can attend. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Pop Holly Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Men, here is actual, factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the Palmolive Lather way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream way. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Life with Luigi, which follows over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.